Welcome to the Steve Stein Guitar Podcast, brought to you by GuitarZoom.com. If you want to improve your guitar playing, keep listening. If you want to improve even faster, go to GuitarZoom.com, where you'll find all of Steve's premium courses, masterclasses, and memberships that'll help you quickly and easily improve your playing. Now, here's your host, Steve Stein. If you're saying hello from, whether it's from YouTube or Facebook or wherever it might be. What we're going to be doing today on this Monday and try and practice for the next week is trying to break up the bigger picture um, of some of the scale shapes that we tend to learn on the guitar. So let's say, for instance, we're doing E major, right? So we're thinking about E major, and oftentimes what we might do is we might come up here and play, which is perfectly fine, or we might come up here and do what's called a spread fingering, right? Hey, Crispy. Hey, Paul. Hey, James. So what we're going to do is we're going to start thinking a little bit more about how to take that idea and play it in different places across the fretboard um, to try and find easier ways to find something very quickly. So if we're told, hey, this song is in the key of whatever or in this particular mode or whatever it might be, uh, Hey, Decon. Hey, Raj. Hey, Marcus. Hey, Kevin. Hey, Greg. Hey, Sean. Hey, Kenny. So what I want to do, when I first started learning how to play, let's say I was in, we're going to stay primarily in, in E, but let me just show you this in G real quick here. Hey, Peter. Hey, uh, Bobby, Martin. Hey, Dean. So what I did was I started learning how to play. The first thing I learned how to play were what I call closed positions. <laughs> And then I remember being introduced to spread fingerings where I would start playing them with three notes on each string, which made it a little bit easier to try and play stuff by having three notes in each string. You could do uh, the alternate picking. And the other thing is, is it made it very symmetrical. You know, when you look at this uh, G major scale, you can see I've got two uh, strings that are exactly the same shape and then two more and then two more. So I started learning that and then I started learning how the all, all the other ones connected onto it. But I have found that there are times when it's nice to be able to um, jump in and just grab something quick and be able to play it. So that's what I want to talk about a little bit today. Okay. So let's go ahead. Uh, Kenny says, sorry to jump in, but how long is your workshop? Well, this is just my morning motivation. The workshop will be at uh, 10 a.m. Pacific in the, the Steve Stein Live group. And I don't know how long it'll be. It'll just be however long we go for, to be honest with you. Um, hey, Mikey. Yeah, sad news about EVH for sure. So, okay, well, let's get going with this because I don't want to take up too much of your time here. So let's say instead of thinking about playing this, that whole shape, let's just take the first octave of it for now. Just that octave. And what I want you to think about is I want you to think about how you could take that and start playing it in different places on your fretboard. So let's take the sixth string, fifth string, and fourth string and try and learn how to play this major scale on all three of those. And again, it's going to be quite easy because it's always the same shape, right? Hey, Wayne, do I teach acoustic? I do. Yep. Stuart, and the stuff that we're learning today certainly can be applied to acoustic as well. Um, you know, there's so many different things that can be applied anywhere. So, uh, okay, cool. Let's keep going. So let's say I found on the fifth string, I found the E. Okay. And I'm going to play that same major scale. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then one again. Now, remember, as we're playing this, what I want you to think about is how the shape I'm playing is exactly the same. I'm playing a spread fingering, spread fingering, and then the major seventh going to the root. Okay? And then let's go to the fourth string and do exactly the same thing. So let's go down to the fourth string and go spread fingering, spread fingering, and then the major seventh to the root. Now, because of the tuning of the guitar, when you go to the fourth string, you got to move in one more fret yet. And what's really great about this is if you're you're not really apt on ear training, this is a really great way of getting your ear used to right? 
uh, getting used to that. So we're just taking a small little segment of the fretboard. Now we can expand this at any time. We might do. And go all the way up and that's fine too. The, the, the purpose of this though is, is to understand that yes, in the bigger picture, we would love to be able to see everything everywhere. That's kind of the ultimate goal really is if you're put into a situation where you're playing in whatever key or whatever mode or you need whatever chord, you can see it all over the fretboard. But the reality is, is that we can't all do that all the time in every situation. So what we want to do is we want to try and find um, the comments are overlapping the visual fretboard. I don't know if you can shut that off or not. I don't, this is kind of new to me. So let me know if, if you can do that, Arthur, if you can shut that off, because I'm not sure. Um, so what I want you to think about is two things. Number one, the shape, the symmetry of the shape. And then number two, the sounds of the scale itself. <laughs> Right, that sort of thing. Okay, and the reason for that is, is let's say, for instance, we wanted to take, we again, we find ourselves in a situation where we don't have a lot of time to think, and we've got to get a plan together. And whatever situation we're finding ourselves in is asking for emixolydian. So in our head, we're like, okay, emixolydian, I got to go here, and I got to do this, or maybe maybe what we need to do is just very quickly fix the major scale that we're playing and switch it to mixolydian. Now, if we know what mixolydian is, we know it's a major scale with the minor seventh added. So what we could do is simply take that scale and we could just lower that seventh note. Now, see, right, because we used to be right there. So now we're here. And now we've got ourselves Mixolydian. If you're enjoying this episode and you'd like to support the podcast, go to guitarzoom.com and consider becoming a premium member. There are three memberships to choose from. VIP, which gives you instant access to a library of short but powerful courses as well as new bite-sized lessons each month. There's also Play Songs that gives you step-by-step -step lessons so you can learn to play your favorite songs fast. And finally, there's Masterclass, university-level training on everything from soloing to music theory, from blues to home recording. For more info about these memberships and all the premium courses available to you, go to guitarzoom.com. Now back to the podcast. Or if you know what Lydian is, Lydian we need to take, we're playing a major scale again uh, with, the, with the major seventh, but we need to raise the fourth degree. So we'd have... <laughs> See that? Okay, so let's keep trying to work on that a little bit. And as far as the, the I need to get rid of the swipe phone to get rid. Oh, if watching on a phone, you need to swipe phone to get rid. That must be the, the text. I'm not sure how that text thing works. But um, anyway, so that's a really easy way of being able to figure that out. Now, there's a lot of different ways that we could look at this. The other thing that I really like about this idea of being able to take a smaller piece is let's say, for instance, we wanted to deal a bit more with the modal harmony, okay? The modality, the, the sound of the mode that we're trying to play in. So let's say, again, we take this E major right here. Just that position right there. Let's say we wanted to hear more of that mode, which really is going to be adding that major seventh in, right? So what we could do is we could make an arpeggio out of this by going from the root to the third, to the fifth, to the major seventh. And what's really great about this spread fingering and just seeing it right here is I can visualize those notes sitting right there. As I 
I play. I can decide what I want to emphasize. So I'm not always just looking at it as a shape, but I'm really trying to visualize the root, third, fifth, and that major seventh. And then I can even keep going and go to the ninth, the eleventh, the thirteenth, and then back to the root again. And again, if you're visualizing this in different places across the fretboard, you might come down here and think, okay, so I got to go root, third, fifth, seventh, ninth. Okay? So, and again, they don't all have to attach together. I'm just trying to get you to think a little bit about trying to find smaller places to do this. So let's. <laughs> oh, that's funny. So. Let's say, for instance, we're playing in E minor, right? So E minor, we know we have to have E, F sharp, G. There's our minor third. And then A, B, C, and then D. And so we've got a minor seventh. Well, again, if we can think about that, we can go somewhere else and do exactly the same thing. So you're not always forced to find the E on the sixth string. You can find them in other places. And explore those sounds. So it's something really worth looking into when you go to play. And this is really nice when you do like what I call chord chasing. When you're trying to follow chords around and you're not just going to stay static in the same key the entire time. Okay, so if I was, for instance, going to go from E major, right, and I was going to make something in there, and then it drops down, let's say it drops down to whatever, let's say it goes to A major, okay, we can decide where we want to play our A, we might drop down to this, chord chase down there and actually do something in A major, come up here and do something up there. So we might be in E and then E or in E and then A comes up. Right? And then maybe it goes to D major, just hypothetically. could follow those around or they could go minor they could do whatever they want but we can just follow those pieces around as opposed to having to uh, distribute across the entire fretboard before we actually start playing so it's something worth looking at a little bit hey jake hey steve hey aries kodiak wayne nico uh so awesome that you guys could join me so let's see what finger exercises are good for stretching fingers on the fretboard well it's always nice to be able to start doing things like spread fingerings if you haven't done those before and then i have students start trying to make exercises with those so you might like right there what i'm doing is just going i'm just inverting the shape right things like that that you can do um there's a cool john petrucci ish one that you can do where, for instance, what you do is you take your fingers and go 9, 10, 11, 12. I'm on the 4th, 3rd, 2nd, and 1st strings. And then I invert the middle two. And then I invert the outside. And then invert the inside again. And then I move to the next two strings, or move down one string. And then move down again. Okay, and then what you do is you take that, go back to the very beginning again, and you're gonna move down your first finger. And you go through the whole sequence again. And then what you can do is you can take your middle finger, and this one's really tough, but you can take your middle finger and move down one, then take your third finger and move down one. So now the space is here, right? You go through the whole sequence over and over and over, and then you can take your first finger and move it down, and that's about as far as I can get. But you could keep getting the idea and keep going with all kinds of different things like that. So there's lots of different ways that you can do exercises. So hopefully that helps you a little bit. This week, what I want you to focus on is grab a chord progression, a jam track that you like, 
And instead of always thinking about just staying in the same position all the time or playing the same um, shape throughout all of your chords, think about it if you're going from E major maybe to C sharp minor and you drop down and then it goes to A and then you go to wherever you want. And then it goes back to E. So there's lots of cool ways that you can do this, okay? So hopefully that helps you a little bit. Um, have a great week and keep practicing. Again, always trying to find something just small that you can add for the week and start exploring and see what you can do with it, okay? So take care, stay positive. Next time on the Steve Stein Guitar Podcast. So let's go ahead and get started. I don't want to take too much of your time, but what I wanted to do today is just focus on some simple harmony ideas so you understand how harmonies work, whether you're dealing with pentatonic or whether you're dealing with diatonic. Hey, Rob. Hey, Emil. Hey, Mohammed. Hey, Robert. Dennis. David. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. So let's go ahead and get started. So what we're going to do here is let's just start off by understanding the basics, very basics of a major scale. And again, I'm not going to go into a bunch of theory today, although... You know, learning your theory of intervals is a very important thing to do. Um, over at GuitarZoom.com, I've got courses like all about intervals, if you want to learn that sort of thing, or ultimate fretboard connection, if you want to learn how everything works together across the fretboard, that sort of thing. Hey, Ray. Hey, Vadoon. Uh, Extranet1. Al. Uh, Scott says, doing great, bro. It's chilling, 32. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I get it. So this is a perfect time to learn. So let's just start off by doing this. Okay, let's say we're dealing with a G major scale. Okay, so what I'm doing there is, again, keeping things very easy and playing the notes G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, and G. Now, if we talk about this in terms of intervals, what I'm doing is I'm playing the first note, which is unison, and then I'm playing the second note, which we call a second, in this case, a major second, and then a third, which in this case is a major third, the fourth, which is what we call a perfect fourth, the fifth, which we call a perfect fifth, the sixth, which we call a major sixth, and the seventh, which we call a major seventh. But for now, just think of this as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of the G major scale. Okay? So what we're going to do here is we're going to talk about Harmony. Now, the harmonies we're going to talk about are basic harmonies that you can use and how to apply those to your fretboard. So we're going to talk about the root, the third, the fifth, the octave, and then what we're going to do is at the end of this, once I've kind of explained to this, uh, this to you, we're going to talk about parallel, um, what I call parallel harmony as well, which is outside the normal harmony. Hey, Steve Stein here from GuitarZoom.com, and thank you so much for listening to this podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, can I ask you a favor? Please subscribe, leave a review, and share it with a friend. Your feedback means more to me than you'll ever know. And be sure to check out my YouTube channels where you'll find over 1,000 videos to help you with your guitar playing. Thanks again for listening. Stay positive, keep playing, and keep having fun. If you'd like some help with your guitar playing but you're not sure how to get started, go to GuitarZoom.com and look for the Help Me Choose survey. By answering a few simple questions, you'll get Steve's personal recommendation of the perfect course for you. All this and more is available for you at GuitarZoom.com.